Bilateral exercises are those which use both the left and right limbs simultaneously. Unilateral exercises are those which only use one limb at a time. However, which of these is better for muscle growth? In this video, we will try to answer this question. To answer this question, we need to understand how exactly muscle growth occurs in the first place. Essentially, we provide a stimulus via resistance training. This then disrupts homeostasis to some extent. This triggers a cascade of physiological pathways which tells the body to build more muscle tissue as an adaptation. Let's backtrack a little and dive a little deeper into what exactly the stimulus part of the process is. Well, this is something we don't fully understand yet, and we are always trying to find the best ways to promote the best stimulus for muscle growth. However, what we do understand is that the stimulus is simply a stress to the muscle. The muscle doesn't know what load is on the bar, or even whether you are using a barbell, dumbbell or machine. All that the muscle experiences are tension and stress. This can be achieved via many different forms of training, including both bilateral and unilateral exercises. Although, are either of these exercise types inherently better for muscle growth than the other? Well, there are many studies which find great hypertrophy from unilateral training and also from bilateral training. And in practice, many successful trainees have reported using both exercise types in their routines. And this makes sense based on what we previously discussed regarding muscle stress. However, to my knowledge, there aren't any studies which directly compare muscle growth between bilateral and unilateral training. So we can't really make direct implications until we have solid evidence to support these claims. However, we can use indirect evidence to make informed assumptions about the potential benefits of each exercise type. First, let's cover the potential benefits that unilateral training can have over bilateral training. There are a few hypothetical benefits that unilateral training may have, although we should remember that this is all based on indirect evidence and mechanisms. The first potential benefit that unilateral training may have for muscle growth is due to what is known as the bilateral deficit. This principle suggests that we cannot produce as much force with both limbs together compared with the sum of each limb working independently. In other words, each limb is slightly stronger when being used unilaterally. Hypothetically, this may mean that we can work a muscle harder by performing unilateral training since this will allow us to lift a little more load or perform slightly more reps. In turn, this may result in a superior stimulus and may ultimately lead to greater muscle growth over time. However, this is a pretty big extrapolation and may just not be the case. In fact, there is evidence that despite the bilateral deficit influencing force production, it may not actually impact muscle activation, let alone long-term muscle growth. For example, this study compared the effects of bilateral versus unilateral leg extensions on force production and muscle activity. Subjects perform maximal isometric contractions on an isokinetic leg extension machine. In other words, they pushed as hard as they could against an immovable leg extension machine. This was performed with both legs together and with each individual leg separately and at various different knee angles. As we can see, the bilateral deficit was observed, with the sum of torque from each leg individually being greater than the total torque produced with both legs together, on average across the different knee angles. However, when comparing muscle activity of the quadriceps, it was almost exactly the same on average between conditions, despite higher forces being produced unilaterally. So once again, it is difficult to extrapolate these findings into actual muscle growth outcomes, but hypothetically, it is possible that single limb training could allow a slightly superior stimulus due to the ability to produce higher forces. Another potential benefit of unilateral training is the ability to perform different movement patterns that cannot be achieved via bilateral training. Each joint can move in different planes of motion, allowing us to flex, extend, bend, twist and rotate at different joints. There are endless numbers of ways that we can move our body through space. However, bilateral exercises limit the number of motions that each joint can move through. They prevent us from actions like rotating and laterally flexing our torso, whereas unilateral movements allow us to move our joints through more planes of motion, which could possibly be beneficial for muscle growth. In general, we want to train a muscle based on the movements it is responsible for. So in some cases, bilateral exercises may limit what movements the muscle naturally produces. And in theory, we might get a better stimulus if the exercises we perform fall more in line with the movements that the muscle produces. For example, the function of the lats are to adduct and extend the shoulder and also to laterally flex and rotate the torso. 
However, when performing bilateral rows or pull-down variations, we are only limited to the adduction and extension movements, whereas unilateral rows and pull-downs will still allow shoulder adduction and extension, but will also usually allow some torso rotation and lateral flexion, which may provide a greater stimulus for the lats. However, the counter-argument that can be made here is that we normally perform multiple exercises for a muscle throughout the week. So when you combine different exercises, you are likely to train that muscle via all of its intended motions anyway. So in the context of the entire training plan, this hypothetical benefit may be redundant anyway. And the last potential benefit that unilateral training may have is that it can train a muscle through a greater range of motion in some cases. Unilateral exercises sometimes allow us to train a muscle through a larger range of motion than what is possible with bilateral training. This is because, like we mentioned, we can sometimes perform additional movements which are restricted when training both limbs simultaneously. For example, let's look at a cable fly. A standard bilateral cable fly ends directly in front of our body where our hands meet. If we were to perform this same movement with one arm at a time, we could end the movement past the midline of our body, requiring the pec to contract through a greater range of motion. And this may result in a superior stimulus since more work is required by the muscle with each rep. So there may be some potential benefits for unilateral training over bilateral training. However, there may also be some downsides which favor bilateral training. The first is the issue of stability for some exercises. Muscles tend to produce less force in unstable compared with stable positions. For example, this study explored the influence of external stability on force output during resistance training. Subjects performed maximal isometric chest press movements at 90 degrees of elbow flexion while lying on a stable bench and an unstable Swiss ball. It was found that pressing on the bench resulted in around a 60% increase in force output shown in the blue compared with the Swiss ball shown in the orange. Based on this idea, we could speculate that unilateral training may cause a similar result in some instances. For exercises which compromise stability, trainees may be reducing their potential force output. This means trainees would need to use a lighter load or perform less reps, which may compromise the hypertrophic stimulus. For example, any form of split squat variation using free weights is probably going to be less stable compared with a bilateral squat variation. This may result in lower force output and a poorer hypertrophic stimulus for the quads and glutes. Although you could get around this by holding onto the rack, using a Smith machine or finding another way to increase stability. The next potential issue with unilateral training is due to the effects of crossover fatigue. When we train one limb, there seems to be a decrease in performance on the other limb too, even though it wasn't trained. This was seen in this study, which explored how training one limb affects fatigue of the other limb. Trainees performed two sets of 100 second maximal isometric contractions on a leg extension machine with only one leg. Before, after the first set, and after the second set, isometric strength was measured with both the leg being trained and the non-training leg. As expected, there was a gradual decline in maximal strength of the leg being trained since it was the one being fatigued. However, there was also a gradual decrease in strength of the non-trained leg, although not quite as much of a drop-off as the trained leg. So, there appears to be somewhat of a central fatigue mechanism at play here. When we train one limb first, we may not be able to match the same load or reps with the other limb in the following set. This may compromise hypertrophy to some extent compared with bilateral training, and the magnitude of crossover fatigue is likely to be dependent on the nature of the exercise. Free weight compound lifts are more likely to have greater crossover fatigue, whereas machine-based isolation lifts will probably have less crossover fatigue. For example, a rear foot elevated split squat will probably have more crossover fatigue to the other limb compared with a single arm overhead tricep extension. And the last potential limitation of unilateral training is its impact on time efficiency. There are two components to time efficiency, the hypertrophic stimulus and the session duration. This means that time efficiency can be improved by either providing a superior hypertrophic stimulus within the same session duration or providing the same stimulus in a shorter time frame. Unilateral training can potentially enhance the hypertrophic stimulus in some cases. However, it will almost double the time it takes to complete the same number of sets as you have to train both limbs with each set. Whereas bilateral training may sacrifice somewhat of a stimulus in some cases, although each set can be completed in a much faster time frame. 
Furthermore, even if the hypertrophic stimulus is slightly inferior using bilateral exercises, the time saved can allow you to perform more sets of that exercise. So the net effect of unilateral training is usually going to have a negative impact on time efficiency compared with bilateral training in most cases. Although if time is not an issue for you, you may still want to preference unilateral exercises if they provide you with a superior hypertrophy stimulus. So based on all this information, let's establish some practical recommendations. First, it should be understood that muscle growth can be effectively achieved using both bilateral and unilateral exercises. However, each form of exercise may have slight benefits over the other. Unilateral exercises may allow higher total force production compared with bilateral training due to the bilateral deficit phenomenon. Unilateral training also usually provides movement through more planes of motion which can help to target a muscle based on what movements the muscle fibers produce. Furthermore, unilateral exercises can sometimes allow us to train a muscle through a larger range of motion than what can be achieved with bilateral exercises. However, unilateral training also has some potential downsides too. First is that some unilateral exercises compromise stability, which may reduce our potential force output. Furthermore, there is usually a small crossover fatigue effect, which may diminish performance of the opposite limb to a small extent. And the biggest practical issue with unilateral training is that it can significantly reduce the time efficiency of your workouts. So overall, neither of these exercise types seems to be inherently better than the other in all cases. Rather, the inclusion of either exercise type comes down to the individual exercise we are referring to, and the context of the entire workout plan. The majority of most people's training routines will likely be bilateral exercises since we generally have more bilateral options to choose from. Although some unilateral exercises may be inputted into your training routine if it makes sense to you. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.